Kyle Rittenhouse's lawyer, defense attorney, Mark Richards, who led the case, joins me now. Mark, thank you very much for being here. Um, let, let's just start on, on that, because obviously it's disturbing, and I know you've spoken about it, to hear the inaccuracies that were discussed about this case prior to the trial. But the fact that it's still happening, what's damaging about that at this point for, for the country on the whole? Well, it just continues the false narrative that these things happened when they didn't. Kyle was a resident. Um, I shouldn't say a resident, but his dad lived there. He worked in the community of Kenosha County. Um, most of his friends lived there, and his best friend lived there, and he spent a lot of time in Kenosha. The gun was never in Illinois. There's absolutely no evidence that he had any ties or affinity to white racists, white supremacists. They looked through all of his phone, um, did numerous, I think, nine search warrants to try and find some dirt, and they came up with none because he wasn't. He was a police cadet, a fire cadet. Um, he was more interested in, you know, Blue Lives Matter and trying to raise money for law enforcement. I want to just play a quick clip uh, from the interview tonight and get your thoughts on this. Let's watch. This case has nothing to do with race. Um, it never had anything to do with race. It had to do with the right to self-defense. Right. Um, I'm not a racist person. I support the BLM movement. I support peacefully demonstrating. And I believe there needs to be change. I believe there's a lot of prosecutorial misconduct, not just in my case, but in other cases. And it's just amazing to see how, how much a prosecutor can take advantage of somebody. Do you, do you believe that there was prosecutorial misconduct here, Mark, as he says? Well, you, as a legal matter, prosecutorial misconduct has very um, specific connotations as used by my client and the general public. I think it has a broader brush. Um, did the prosecutors do some things that I really don't approve of? Yes. Did it rise to the level of prosecutorial misconduct from a legal standpoint? Um, I don't think it necessarily did. Um, them putting on evidence that they know was untrue, totally mm -hmm. inappropriate. Um, but would that have been able to get Kyle a new trial if he'd been found guilty? I don't think so. The issue regarding the drone footage, um, that would have had to have been litigated um, mm -hmm. in a very methodical and pointed way to prove that they had done something wrong, I think we would have been able to do that. But I can't say that without having had the hearing. So I, I know you commented on this, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it as well. The, the internship offers that have been coming in by some members of Congress, what's your reaction to that? And, and what do you think about that in terms of Kyle? Because you know him better than any of these people do. Well, I think there's a lot of people who want to use Kyle for their own means. Um, I think the way the Rittenhouse name right now um, has trended on Twitter, and that's what we live in as a Twitter society. People want to use his name, get it out there so they can get some publicity. Um, I think it's cheap. That's what I think. So what, what's your advice? to? I know I heard you say, look, it's up to Kyle and that you and um, uh, the other attorney who he obviously had good relationships with both of you. And I know you've talked about the struggles of, of dealing with this case. But, you know, what's your advice to him about how he should live his life from now on? Because he's got a lot of big decisions to make about whether or not he goes off to college and kind of keeps his head down and gets on with his life or whether or not he does become a symbol for certain for certain things that people would like him to be a symbol for. Yeah, my advice would be to change his name and start his life over. Um, he's very recognizable right now. There's a lot of people who I don't think um, have his best interests at heart uh, and probably want to make him a symbol of something I don't think he wants to be necessarily um, associated with. And once you give up your name and your likeness and you be join those causes, I think a lot of people will use you for their own purposes and you won't be able to control it. We've had that talk with Kyle, um, and it's going to be a fine line where he decides to go. Ultimately, I hope he makes the right choices. You know, I hope, I would think his life would be a lot easier um, 
being anonymous and going on with his life as opposed to try and keep some of his fervor and supporters happy. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, a lot of tragedy here across the board, which you have pointed out very clearly. Uh, two people are dead. And what, one thing that strikes me, Mark, before I let you go, is that there's not enough discussion in, the, in what's around this about whether it doesn't really care. It doesn't matter if you like the person that Kyle Rittenhouse is or you don't or what you think about the people who were killed that night in this situation. Um, what matters is that we have a system of justice and that those jurors did the best they could to decide the issue before them. And, and I think there's not a lot of respect and acknowledgement of that on both sides. Well, I have. Um, those jurors, you know, started with 20, ended up with 18, and then down to 12, um, were under a tremendous amount of pressure. And I think many of them, if not all of them, knew that going into it, once they knew the case that they had been summoned for. The answers that they gave back in chambers, um, late in the voir dire process, you know, one woman who did make the final 12, you know, flat out said, no matter what we decide, half the United States is going to be mad at us. Mm -hmm. So they had that in their minds. It had to be, I think, at the forefront. And I give them a huge amount of credit for being able to put that aside, not listen to the people who are outside mm -hmm. screaming and yelling to hang Kyle and do what I think the evidence warranted. Yeah. Um, well, they did that. And um, I think it's important to respect their decision and their finding and the hard work that they put into it. It's not an easy task, but it seems like they did a better job of sort of putting those blinders on than perhaps a lot of us on the outside. Um, Mark, thank you very much. It's very good to have you here today. Mark Richards. Have a good Kyle day. House's defense attorney. You do the same, sir. Happy Thanksgiving to you. All right. Joining me now is Katie Pavlich, editor of townhall.com, and Jessica Tarlov, head of research at Bustle Digital Group. Both are Fox News contributors. Um, Jessica, let me start with you. You know, to this point of